Hi, welcome to Commercial Law Tutorials, Law of Purchase and Sale. We have already looked at the definition and the essentials, duties of the buyer and those of the seller, latent and patent defects, passing of risk, delivery, and passing of ownership. Today we are moving on to lesson number seven, special sales. In this lesson, we'll look at the definition, then the special sales we have. And at the end of the lesson, I'll give you popular exam questions relating to this lesson. First, the definition. What is a special sale? It is a sale contract with varied and modified implied terms and conditions done by the parties as they substitute some implied terms with their own terms and conditions in some particular situations. The parties include riders and amendments in some sections of the contract or at the end of that contract as they completely agree and see fit between themselves as the buyer and the seller. The parties in sale contracts may vary these terms and conditions as they wish provided these are not illegal. Some special sales are common though. They are used frequently and their conditions are now well known in law. I'll give you some examples of common special sales. We have sale by symbol, sale by description, sale for stoods, CIF sales, FOB sales, cash on deliver sales, lay by sales, credit sales, and higher purchase sales. I will look at this in detail. First, we have sell by sample. It is a type of sale in which the buyer purchases goods under an agreed condition with the seller that goods sold to the buyer are as good as one shown to the buyer as a sample. The sample is a part of the contract an express agreement, a seller guaranteed that all goods sold to the buyer conform to the sample shown to that buyer. So the goods to be delivered to the buyer will have to be the same as the sample submitted by the seller at the time of contracting to that buyer. For instance, when buying clothing items in bulk, customers usually rely on the sample provided by the seller to judge and predict what the whole lot will look like. Let us look at this case. Bauer took Ferguson to his farm where a quantity of forage was stored and showed Ferguson some several bundles. Ferguson bought the best quantity of the best quality of the forage shown to him, leaving Bauer to select and deliver the bundles with the quality he wanted. Bauer selected some bundles and delivered them to Ferguson. Ferguson refused to accept the forage on the ground that it was not equal to sample he had been shown. So Bauer sued. It was held that although this wasn't a strict sell by sample, but rather of description, the evidence proved that the bundles tendered were not at all equal to the quality sold to Ferguson, so the contract was invalid. We should note that PAFAR does not amount to express warranty. PAFAR is a statement or a claim that is promotional in nature. These exaggerated statements made by the seller in an advert are not to be taken seriously by the buyer. For instance, our product is the best in the world. That is just a statement. So window displays and adverts do not fall under sell by symbols. Look at the picture we have below. One of the advert and one that shows reality of the product being sold. This is perfect we are talking about. 
sell by description. That is the next contract we have. It is a contract of sale that includes some description of the goods and the parties are thereby induced wholly or in part to the contract by the said description. If the buyer describes what he wants to buy, the sale of goods is by description. The parties agree that the goods sold by the seller to the buyer will be of a particular type or description, hence there will be an implied condition on the seller that the goods to be delivered will have to correspond with the description agreed. For instance, a particular motor car model which is red in color. We have a case here. We bought from Keynes a one horsepower panel gas engine for the purpose of supplying motive power for the grinding of coffee, a purpose for which the engine supplied was unfit. It was, however, an engine corresponding exactly to the description of the one ordered by home. After realizing that the machine wasn't working for the purpose he had bought it for, Hall sued. The machine was the one described during the purchase. That was what the court said. So, Hall could not cancel, recover the purchase price and damages from Keynes. Stealthful stood. It is a sale where a thing is sold explicitly as it stands or with all faults. The purchaser buys the thing from the seller as it stands, hence indemnifying the seller against claims for any damages if they are defects on the goods sold, whether patent or latent, provided the seller is not fraudulent in any way. The seller, if he notified the buyer that goods are being sold under foods, in the absence of fraud, is not liable for any defect in that thing sold under foodstuffs. For instance, a geyser which delivers only local water, fort oven, leaking roof, or a rusty gate. We also have another case. In this case, a property purchaser under foodstuffs later discovered that there were no approved building plans for a garage built on the property and consequently the structure was rendered illegal. The court held that the absence of the statutory approval such as building plans is a latent defect. But the seller did not know and did not conceal this. There was a fustus clause in the sale, therefore the contract was valid. Post insurance freight sales. A CIF sale contract is made at a price to cover the cost of goods sold, insurance and freight of those goods by sea. The seller is responsible for transporting goods, loading the goods on the ship and paying freight for the goods to be delivered to a port chosen by the buyer. Risk passes when goods are received by the buyer. That is when risk passes from the seller to the buyer. Let us look at the obligations of the seller in this type of sale. To ship goods sold to the port. To make a contract of carriage for the delivery of the goods at the agreed destination with the bill of lading evidence in the contract. To arrange insurance on behalf of the buyer. To invoice the goods to the buyer. To give the buyer the bill of lading the insurance policy and the invoice. Those are the obligations of the seller. Free on board sale. The seller sells goods to the buyer under the agreement that he will deliver goods to the nearest chosen port for the buyer, for which the buyer becomes responsible for those goods henceforth. The seller is only responsible for taking the goods to the nearest port only and not with whatever happens thereafter. Any shipping cost to the buyer's destination is the responsibility of the buyer. The seller costs a price including the cost of delivering goods to the nearest port. The buyer bears all the shipping expenses and is responsible to get the product from that port to its final destination. 
Once seller delivers the goods on the port agreed, risk passes to the buyer for loss and damage on the goods. The shipping company will be acting in the capacity of an agent for the buyer. Thus, delivered to the port by the seller is delivered to the buyer. Cash on delivered sales is when a recipient pays for a good or service at the time of delivery instead of the time of order. So the potential buyer receives and sees the product first before paying. Thus, he has the opportunity to inspect the goods before exercising his option to reject or accept those goods. Pizza deliveries to one's house is our example. Lay by sales. It is a contract of sale where the buyer pays for the goods in at least two installments and does not receive the goods until the full price has been paid. So deposit on the thing is made. Seller puts the thing aside while buyer pay off the remainder of the purchase price in an agreed time period. The buyer, after paying the whole purchase price, will then receive the thing. The seller therefore keeps the thing still owns that thing until buyer pay off that price. It is a conditional contract. Ownership passes after full payment. So the seller is the thing, sells the thing to the buyer, doesn't deliver the thing. Ownership does not pass until full price has been paid. Advantages of lay-by. Usually no interest fees are applied. Price cannot be increased during the lay-by period. Buyer can spread purchase price for expensive goods over a larger period of time. Credit sales It is a purchase of a thing where a seller do not require payment for the thing to be made in full at the time of purchase. The buyer is allowed to delay payment to a later date which can not exceed a stipulated date as more interest will be put on the credit for late payment. It is an unconditional sale agreement. Ownership passes to the buyer instantly, even if the buyer would not have finished paying up the purchase price. So a seller has the thing, sells the thing to the buyer, delivers the thing to the buyer, ownership passes to the buyer, and the buyer will finish paying the purchase price in the agreed time period whilst owning the thing. Advantages of credit sales A credit sale allows business customers to generate cash on the commodity or things sold before paying the seller back. Selling on credit increases the sales volume for the seller as the number of buyers will increase because those who cannot afford the cash price pay using credit facility. The disadvantage is that the seller may have to write off some of the debts as bad debts, as some customers are never loyal. Higher pages. It is a type of a contract in which the buyer pays for a thing in regular installments while using that thing. The goods are hired by the buyer. So the buyer makes an initial down payment and pays the balance plus interest in equal installments for a specific period of time. It is a conditional contract. Ownership passes after full payment. Elements of higher pages. Payment for the thing is made in installments, two or more. The possession of the thing is given to the buyer immediately. But ownership of the thing remains with the seller until the last installment is paid by the buyer. The seller claims the right to repossess the property if the buyer fails to pay for the thing in full. And the buyer cannot pledge, sell or mortgage the thing as he is not the owner of the asset or the thing till the last payment is made on that thing. So we are saying that the seller is the thing. Delivery of the thing is made to the buyer after he sells that thing to the buyer using higher purchase. 
Ownership does not pass to the buyer. Ownership of the thing remains with the seller until the last payment is made. But the buyer possesses the thing and uses that thing whilst paying for that thing. Advantages of higher purchase The seller is able to sell goods that the buyer might not otherwise afford. The buyer is able to buy expensive goods for which he cannot afford at cash price as the payment is spread over a period of time. The buyer has the immediate use of the thing without paying the entire amount. The disadvantage is that the seller receives the full amount over a period of time. Now the questions. Assess the obligations of the data and the creditor in relation to higher purchase contract. Explain the following terms indicating the obligations of the seller, CIF sales and FOB sales. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and like.